What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to Thursday evening's Anfield Agenda News Roundup. Today, we're going to give you the very latest on Sepp Vandenberg's move to Brentford by the looks of things. We're going to be asking, can Barcelona really afford Luis Diaz? And, of course, give you the latest on Georgie Mamardashvili and everything else with regards to this summer's transfer window. Nothing has changed, though, from the frustration front, my friends. We are still awaiting Liverpool to dip their toes in this summer's market. It's all very well and good bringing in Georgie Mamardashvili, but he's next summer's uh, solution, not right now. So I'm going to go through it over the next few minutes. As always, though, we want to know your thoughts. Let us know in the comment section. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I will be back tonight at 8.45 with the Late Night Agenda. I apologise this video is coming out a little bit later than normal. I was at the physiotherapist today, so I'm only just back in. Let's get straight into it, though. Right, so, Sepp Vandenberg. It is getting closer and closer to him becoming a Brentford player. Uh, £25 million package plus some add-ons. Rizzo Romano has pretty much given the here we go. He said this deal is going to be completed in the next 24 hours. It does look like it is Brentford. We know that Leverkusen were mentioned in the conversation as well, but they always had to move one out before they could bring one in. Sepp van der Berg had the chance to speak with Xavi Alonso and Thomas Frank and looks as if he's made the decision to stay in the Premier League and go and join Brentford, where, of course... He'll hook up with another former Liverpool player, Fabio Carvalho, who basically said today that he didn't want to spend the season sitting on Liverpool's bench waiting for opportunities. So he backed himself, and I'm never going to slag anybody for that. So Sepp Vandenberg is going to bring us in more money. Now, it's all very well and good bringing in the money from Solanke, Sepp Vandenberg and others, but it'd be nice to spend that money, right? So let's hope, and it is hope at this point, because it's eight days to go, my friends. I don't know how frustrated you are, but for me, it's going up and up on an hourly basis. Lucho and Barcelona. What's the latest there? Barcelona have made an attempt, according to Sport, who are a Spanish publication, to sign Luis Diaz. However, Liverpool told them they'll only entertain offers for a fee of about €70 million Euro or £64 million pound upwards. And Barca have now been forced to move for other targets, are considering Kingsley Coman and Federico Chiesa. Now, on the Barcelona thing, they still can't register Danny Olmo. The player that they worked so hard to bring in from Leipzig. And they can't even get him into the squad yet. So I don't know how they're going around trying to bring in the likes of Luis Diaz. Or any other winger like Kingsley Coman. They very much seem like a rudderless ship at the minute. And uh, I would be avoiding them like the plague if I was a player right now. It isn't the Barcelona of the halcyon days of Pep Guardiola and Lionel Messi. It is a very different Barcelona right now. Obviously the new camp's been done up. Barcelona are playing in the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona. So you don't even have that side of things. Um, so I don't think he ends up at Barcelona. But again, the fact that Liverpool do have a number that they would take for Luis Diaz, I think again gives an indication that we probably don't see his long-term future at the club. Now, I don't know if they have their eyes set on Anthony Gordon as Diaz replacement, but I don't think we've heard the end of Diaz and a potential departure yet in this window. As close to the end of the window as it is, I still think there might be a twist in this tale yet, so keep an eye on that situation. Uh, this coming in from Greece, and there are whispers in Greece that Costas could be about to complete a move back to Olympiacos before the transfer window shuts. Now, regular viewers will know that speaking with David Lynch in the past, we have brought up the idea of Costas being moved on. Again, you would have to say that it's probably the right decision because I don't think Costas will ever become the first choice at Liverpool Football Club. And if he wants to go and play, Olympiacos, back to where he joined us from, would be as good a move as any. So let's wait and see what happens on that one. But of course, if we do lose... Cost us, we would have to bring in a replacement. You know, we've seen the likes of Owen Beck and others uh, mentioned to go out on loan. Obviously, if Joe Gomez moves on, which I hope he doesn't, by the way, then um, we're going to be leaving ourselves very short. So, as I said at the start of this video, it's all very well and good. Liverpool, at the minute, being able to sell players, bring in money. But it would be nice for us to see some reinforcements brought in for the manager to be able to go out there and attack the league. So, where are we at with Georgie Mamadars, really? They're now discussing the final details of the deal, according to reports. Liverpool won Valencia to cover a large part of his salary during his loan and are looking to spread the payment across multiple years, which, again, is not unusual for any football transfer. Yes, it's about €30 million, Euro, so it's not a huge fee, but the more you can amortise that across the length of the contract, the better. 
Um, and I'm not surprised Liverpool won Valencia to cover a large part of his wages because he's going to be staying at Valencia and they aren't going to be paying Liverpool a loan fee. So he very, they very much should be covering his wages, in my opinion. And I hope that that doesn't become a sticking point, but it is certainly one that sounds very sensible to me. Now, another departure looks like it could be on the cards. Not a permanent one, but Celta Vigo are positioning themselves to take Stefan Bajcetic on loan for this window. Now, that makes a lot of sense because, of course, that's where he came from. Uh, and if the club views that that is a good spot for him to go and get a season under his belt of first-team football, again, so be it. They're trying to sort out departures as a priority, apparently, and then they're lining up a loan move before the end of the window. So let us know in the comment section what you think about that situation with um, Stefan Bajcetic. I think it makes sense. I think whether it's a Premier League move or a move to La Liga, as long as Sepp get, excuse me, as long as Stefan gets the opportunity to go and establish himself, get minutes and get back up to full fitness, well, that's grand for me. Now, one more thing before I finish up this evening, my friends, it's about Joe Gomez. So we know that Joe Gomez has been taking time to have a think about his future and whether he wants to stay at Liverpool Football Club or move on. This piece from Football Insider say that Aston Villa have once again inquired about the possible availability of Joe Gomez. Now, from Joe's perspective, a very good football club in Aston Villa. Obviously, you can see the attraction. Newcastle was mentioned as well. But from our perspective, we would then directly be strengthening a rival. And these days, Aston Villa are certainly a Champions League position rival. And if they do view Joe Gomez as good enough to come in there, why are we so quick to push him out the door? Or why are we so quick to at least accept offers for him? Because his versatility, as we've mentioned many times on this show, is key and has been key for us, particularly last season. So it's all very well and good talking about 40, 45 million pound fees, but... Are we leaving ourselves too much to do or are we going to be hung out to dry again with no incomings before the window closes? The truth is, as I sit here right now, four minutes past six on Thursday, 22nd of August, folks, I don't know what to expect from incomings, but it is almost another full day gone through with just over a week left in the window. And I can still say to you that Liverpool Football Club have not signed a single player in this summer's transfer window, despite the promises of a busy August here we are towards the end of it now with a lot to do. I'll leave it up to you whether you decide that Liverpool will be able to get these things done or not. And of course, we will discuss them in far more detail on tonight's Late Night Agenda, which I'll be back live with at 8.45. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget our live show tickets are on sale. There's a link in the description of this video. If you'd like to come along and see us in Liverpool, November the 15th, we will be at the magnificent Hot Water Comedy Club once again. Hopefully putting on an even bigger and better show than the last time. Appreciate you watching. Hope to see you at 8.45 tonight for the Late Night Agenda. Until then, have yourselves a wonderful Thursday. Much love. Bye-bye.